Hi, my name is Luis Moreno, and I am the tuba player from the Mid-Cities Brass Quintet. Um, I just wanted to say I'm super excited for you guys to be uh, writing these pieces, um, and we really look forward to playing them, and I'm very excited to see what you guys come up with. So the purpose of this video will be to help you have a bit more understanding of the tuba, like as far as its capabilities are, what's best for it to play in, um, in pieces, um, and in general. Just extend your overall knowledge of it. I hope you find it very helpful. If you have any questions, you can get um, any of our contact info from Haley Rigero. She'd be happy to give it to you, and we would be very happy to answer any questions that you have, because we want you to be able to put out your best work. So let's get started here. So let's talk about first how it works. The tuba works the same as any other brass instrument. I create a buzz here with my lips, which creates a vibration of sound. Then that buzz from my lips, I transfer it into the mouthpiece, and then the mouthpiece into the instrument, which is amplified through the instrument itself. So first I'll demonstrate a normal buzz without the mouthpiece. And here's that same buzz with me doing the exact same thing into my mouthpiece. And here's me doing the exact same thing in connected to the instrument. Also, uh, manipulate my embouchure to without pushing down any of my button valves um, to get different pitches. Okay, and it's not just in octaves; it's also different ones too. Okay, and then the valves, what they do is they open and close certain holes and pathways in the tubing itself, which manipulates the air to move differently and thus creating different pitches. This is kind of the same as like if you're like playing on an ocarina or a um, flute or any instrument that has holes on it, you close it and it makes the air move differently. So I'll hit that here. As you can see, okay? So first we're gonna talk about what tuba generally does best. Um, and I'm gonna be preaching uh, what I'm about to talk about for pretty much the entire video. Um, there's a stigma and general uh, stereotype that's associated with tuba and that it's a very basic instrument and you know isn't really capable of doing um nearly as much stuff as like the other instruments um within uh, within strings or wind instruments as well or anything and that you like doesn't the tuba just do this which you know is all fine and well it's an important part for that style of music but the Ku tuba is just as capable of um, doing any of the things that any other instrument is capable of doing. There are so many insane tuba players with the technique that you couldn't even imagine. And what I hear a lot whenever I play is like, oh man, I'm, I didn't even know the tuba did, could do something like that. And that's not just me like thinking that I'm a good player. I mean, it's really a lot of tuba players. Like, it's very common for us to play um, very technical, very interesting music, just like anything else. So, with that in mind, let's, let's tread on ahead. What it does best, the tuba is, for especially a brass quintet and really most ensembles that it plays in, it is best used for bass and support of the ensemble. So, what that means is, like, it's the same as, like, a bass guitar, like, in a rock band, you know? Like, it offers that, like, mmm and, like, support that everyone needs, and it really helps fills out the sound and presents a thing for everyone to fit their sound into, ultimately, if that makes sense, okay? So, you typically want the tuba sitting in the lower range of its instrument to provide that support. A mistake that a lot of composers make, and you mean, you know, it's, it's fine because we can play anywhere, but they think that, oh man, we should not be getting anything uh, with ledger lines below the staff, because I feel like as musicians, we're typically taught that um, stuff with ledger lines is common. That's the reason the staff is there, so it's easier to read. And if it's and the ledger lines are there, then that's not something that's common. For the tuba, though, ledger lines below the staff, it's very common and encouraged for us to play in that low range down there. That's the sweet spot, really, where you get the tuba's main function. So here's an F uh, right below the staff, one space below. We are in bass clef as well. So that's the F right below the staff on a bass clef, and here's the B flat below that, which is two ledger lines and a space below. As 
you can see that's the sweet spot. And then here's the F, which is below that, which is four ledger lines below us that. So that octave there is our sweet spot. That is like, man, that is where the best bass stuff is happening on the tuba. And we can still play very technical, as you can see. Okay, so that's the sweet spot. Don't feel like you have to write everything in the in the staff. If you want, if you want the bass and support from the tuba, you want to write it below the staff. That's where you're gonna get the best sound. Now, needless to say, that doesn't mean the tuba only sticks around there and should stick around there. The tuba has the widest range out of any instrument um, within the brass family. I can play extremely low and even pretty dang high as well. Not as high as a trumpet, of course, but you'll find that our range is very wide. So here's that F right below the staff again. Now here's the F below that, which is four ledger lines below the staff. Now I'm going to go down chromatically until I can't go any lower. Okay. So here's the F starting at the F, four ledger lines below the staff, going down chromatically. So starting at that F, I went all the way down to an A flat, which from there might have been maybe six or seven ledger lines below the staff. Um, granted, though, we can't move very technically in that range. That range you want to have typically for maybe big moments where like there's a nice chord and you want a real low note hitting right there. But we cannot move as technically there, and I'll demonstrate that here. That's from that F to below the staff to F4 larger lines, and then here's me trying to play technically um, in that really low, low pedal range. It's not really as easy. It's a lot more difficult. So technicality doesn't really happen down there. It's more just effect and low, long tones, typically. So now let's talk about how high the tuba can go. So we've got that low, low range, which is like maybe seven or line, letter lines below the staff. Um, and then I'm gonna go as high as we can. So here's the F again, right below the staff, which is, let's have that known as our middle F. That is the middle range of the tuba, maybe even low. Here's the F up an octave above that, which is the F from the second line from the top of the staff. And that's still pretty mid range. That's mid high range starting to get up there. So now here's that, uh, here's that F an octave above that, which is two ledger lines and a space above the staff. It is not, it's very common for us to um, play that range in a lot of our solo repertoire and even some band and orchestra pieces I've had to play up there. We can even go a bit higher. Which of course it starts to get a bit of a strain there, but it is possible and there, again, there are plenty of compositions where we have been required to play up there. Okay? So, what sounds good on the tuba is playing in that sweet spot of the F below the staff from to F four ledger lines below the staff. That is great room that you want to have a lot of your bass stuff playing. Now, however, the tuba does sing quite well in that F below the staff to the top of the staff. In that nice mid-high range, the tuba plays very beautifully and can play some really nice lines there. All of that was generally pretty much in the staff right there. And it was very easy, uh, no strain at all, no difficulties for us to play in there. Okay? And in the same, we can even get high and play in that high range above the staff comfortably too when we call it for. As far as articulation goes, the tuba is just as capable of playing as much articulation and intense articulated stuff as the trumpet can. Um, me as well, especially, my single tongue is like really, really fast. So here's um, this quarter note right there, I'm going to do 16th. 
Okay, so the tuba is just capable. Me personally, though, my double tongue is kind of non existent, so that's as far as my limit goes. Um, but the tuba is just capable of tonguing and articulating just as fast as a trumpet. Now, granted, typically, most often, trumpet players um, and trombone players, even, are going to be able to tongue things much more easily at a faster pace than the tuba because there's more for us to move. We have a bigger armature, so there's a bit more movement of our tongue than um, other brass players. So the, again, and that's as far as, that's another thing, like the tuba, while it is possible for us to play as many things as like the trumpet can, the trumpet obviously is gonna have an easier time playing much faster, more intense things than the tuba can. Because, well, I mean, yeah, it's just, we have a lot more, like this is literally how far we have to push down our valves at times just to get, um, to push our valves down in technique, which, you know, creates some time. And also the embouchure is just much bigger. So we have more movement that is required uh, from our fingers and our mouth as opposed to a trumpet player. But again, uh, Roger Bolo playing the Carnival of Venice, which is a popular trumpet solo, is possible. Tuba is capable of such things. Again, I, I told you this is going to be the thing that I preach in this video, is do not doubt the capability of this tuba. And I will demonstrate some excerpts here in a bit showing you what all the tuba is capable of, but we still have a couple more things that we should go over. As far as slurs go, um, wider slurs are going to be a bit more tough than closer together slurs. So like, let's say you have, you want to slur an F to an F, like let's just say an octave like that. Uh, slowly that's not going to be hard, but if you want to get like a fast slur like that, it's going to be easier when a slur is closer together. As far as trills go on the tuba, the tuba is capable of many trills, but it is not as good at it as, let's say, the trumpet of the French horn would be, because again, yeah, they're maybe pushing down like this much distance for the vowels, whereas the tuba is like pushing this much distance for their vowels. Um, so the trill, they have more distance to move. It's possible, as you can see here, like this is for one, one trill. <laughs> certain places it does get a little tricky so um, that would be a much longer video honestly if we went into detail on how many trills work easily so if you have any questions just like hey this is a trill I was thinking of putting in there then I'll let you know if that's easy or not but again like this is all it's not that this stuff is impossible it's just something you might think about like oh this is kind of hard um, and trills in general are going to be more tough on a tuba than they are on a trumpet that's pretty much a good, it goes as far as what the tuba is good on. Um, so in conclusion though, a little recap, tuba range playing in your pieces from the F right below the staff to the F4 ledger lines above below the staff. That is a nice sweet pot spot for you to get very good um, bass support playing. But it, it, is also, it is also fine and very like common to write us playing in the staff as well and some stuff above the staff. But again, that's just as you see fit, but do not feel discouraged at all to write stuff below the staff, because that is a tuba's very easy and maybe even best spot that we play in, really, because we, that's what we love to do. Tuba players love to play low, okay? If you have any questions as far as what the tuba's capable of otherwise, feel free to ask me. Um, you can get our contact information from Haley Woodrow. Uh, so now we're gonna talk a bit about the two different tubas that give two different kinds of sounds. So what I have in my hands here is a bass tuba. This is a bass F tuba. What the F means is that the scale that, like the first scale that we learn, um, is fingered da, 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 on, on starting on F there. But on my C tuba, I would finger the C scale that exact same way. Da, 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 da. And on a B flat tuba, same thing. Da, 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 da. So this is a bass F tuba. And then what I have back here, which is this big gold tuba, is my contra bass C tuba. So bass F tuba and contra bass C tuba. So the different difference between the two is the bass F tuba has a very bright sound to it, um, has an easier high range accessibility, and it's typically easier to play technicality, te technical passages on. Whereas the contra bass C tuba, has a darker sound um, to it, has a really easy accessible low range that we can play. But, not to say though that 
I cannot play technically on my contrabass C tuba. And I can so really, anything I play on my bass F tuba, I can also play on my contrabass C tuba, and vice versa as well. Anything I can play on my contrabass C tuba, I can also play on the bass F tuba as well. So first, let's show you the two different sounds of the two compared between them. Here is um, the F, the bass F tuba. contrabass C tuba in comparison. Notice the darker tone on here compared to the brighter tone of the bass F tuba. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a few excerpts um, on both horns to show you what the tuba is capability of and kind of what I individually am capable of and kind of flex a little bit as you can say. So first I'll start with a couple of excerpts from on the bass F tuba. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, two players capable of many technical playing. Okay, and again, very bright sound on that too as well. Here's another one. See what I mean? Um, so now we're going to talk about to really showcase the high uh, range and brightness of the F tuba. And as I said, like the high range, mid high range, the high range really sings well on the tuba. Um, this is the tuba solo from Bidlo from Pictures at an Exhibition. <laughs> Try to get a better start. No. <laughs> As you can see, the tuba is capable of a lot. Now let's play a couple of excerpts on the excerpts on the contrabass C tuba. Uh, this is the um, Prokofiev Five, one of the most popular tuba excerpts, and this one shows the range, the nice low darkness that the tuba can play on. So that excerpt showed that all of that was from the F um, in the staff, right below the staff, to the uh, pedal E flat, which is about four layer lines in space below the staff. So the second half of this excerpt shows the nice uh, mid-high range of this tuba and its darkness. But nothing needs to say that this contrabass C tuba is also very capable of playing fast technique on as well. Um, this is an excerpt from the Fountains of Rome. <laughs> technique as well as slow lyrical stuff but generally the F tuba the, the bass F tuba is going to have an easier higher range a much brighter sound and more technically capable than the contrabass C tuba and the contrabass C tuba is going to have a much darker sound and a much more accessible low range but again anything that I play on, on the contrabass C tuba I can also play on the bass F tuba so really what you think about when you're thinking, do I want to write for bass tuba or contrabass tuba? And again, you don't have to think about it that deep. You can also just write 
tuba. I'm just saying that there are these two different sounds available for you um, should you want to ride for one specific. If you want a brighter sound on the tuba, then the bass F tuba would be the way, and then if you want a darker sound, the contrabass C tuba is the way. Okay? Um, that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, again, if you took one thing from this video, I would say that the tuba is capable of a lot more, as I'm sure I hope you saw from those excerpts that I played. Um, and if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, feel free to reach out. Hayley Vidro would be more than willing, and I and any of us are willing to answer any questions that you may have. All right, thank you again. Bye.